Welcome to the Six Sigma Sense. My name is Praveen Gupta. I had the privilege to manage a small wins to Six Sigma, the first four projects that were run to prototype Six Sigma methodology at Motorola under the guidance of its inventor, late Billy Smith. Six Sigma is not about statistics. Six Sigma is not about incremental improvement either. Instead, Six Sigma is about accelerating change. It is about achieving dramatic improvement quickly. Six Sigma requires creativity, collaboration, and more importantly, aggression against business problem. So what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma that started as a process improvement methodology has become a way of doing business. So the question is, how does Six Sigma relate to business? The integrated performance management pyramid shows four aspects of sustaining profitable growth. They are business scorecard, Six Sigma, innovation, and process excellence. The business scorecard sets the right drivers in motion. Six Sigma maximizes profitability. Innovation increases revenue and process excellence uh, is required to sustain improvement. So what do we mean by excellence? We all expect excellence, but we deliver acceptable goods. Excellence is defined in Six Sigma lingo as being on target. Acceptable products, as shown in the upper half of the slide, require checking and rechecking, and thus adding to the cost of product or service. However, if we produce on target, as shown in the lower half of the slide, we don't have to check, check, and recheck. And thus, we can reduce our product cost by as much as 30%. So how do we define Six Sigma? Qualitatively, Six Sigma means twice the capability as required by the customer. Quantitatively, Six Sigma implies virtually perfect products. Practically no defects or errors, specifically no more than 3.4 defects per million opportunities. So where do we start Six Sigma? Well, Six Sigma begins with listening to the customer. Customers have many requirements, spoken and unspoken. You would like to know unspoken requirements as well as spoken requirements. You would like to know what frustrates the customer what they would love to have. If you know all customer requirements, you can start thinking of pursuing Six Sigma projects by defining customer critical requirements. But be cautious. Don't jump to the solution fast. To maximize gains, we must first generalize the problem. Expand the scope and then develop a general solution. Once you have developed a general solution, you can then apply the solution not once, but many times over. So how do we develop a solution? Using Six Sigma methodology, of course. The methodology consists of five phases. The phases are define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. The define phase is the most important phase of the Six Sigma methodology. As we say, well-defined problems are half solved. Interestingly, the define phase is totally non-statistical. All phases of the methodology have many powerful tools that are available to us in our toolbox. But people struggle with Six Sigma when they jump to the improvement phase first. They must resist the craving to solve an ill-defined problem. One of the lessons we have learned that one must pay attention to control phase for sustaining improvement. In fact, the control phase can be relabeled as sustained phase because it utilizes control and process management tools. To learn about Six Sigma, there are numerous resources. Of course, you can contact us. We would love to hear from you. We have even developed non-statistical approach to explain the power of Six Sigma to common person. While there are about 3,000 books on Amazon, we believe these are the best five books you would like to read about Six Sigma. So, why we produce this video? Well, we produce this video to help you understand the intent of Six Sigma. Remember, 
Six Sigma is about achieving dramatic improvement quickly with or without statistical tools. Most Six Sigma tools are non-statistical and understanding the intent of Six Sigma is the fastest way to achieve dramatic improvement. Thank you.